There it is. How's everybody today? Yeah, we made it. Well, let me press this button real quick. One moment. There. Okay. How's everybody? It's Saturday afternoon. It is a beautiful day out there. It's almost such a beautiful day. I, I almost called in sick to you guys. I can't come in. It's nice out. Yeah. I got a bunch of stuff here. Good Lord, the stuff that's been coming in. Who's here? We got Ant, Fire Cajun, Adam Thomas, CJ. CJ, I got something I think I need a prototype for. CJ does this uh, 3D printing, for example. I just This one's upside down. Let me straighten that out. Okay. Uh, these are like a, a coin holder that acts as an insert for the uh, two-inch acrylic holders. Real neat. He's, I guess he's going to do a whole jigsaw puzzle with the things. Uh, kind of nifty. But I've got uh, a couple of ideas that need to be explored. That'll be neat. I mean, I... I don't want to put up t-shirts. Everybody's got t-shirts, and I'm not really a, a t-shirt clothier or seller. Uh, but I got a couple of uh, a couple of ideas I'm working on. So we'll need that. There's Randy Collins. There's Crystal. Hello, hello. American Woodland Relics. Is that a new name? Welcome aboard. Every now and then, every week or two, we get uh, you know a couple of new names. There's Matt Penn. Maybe I'll be able to watch a little today. Depends if we're busy. You miss these classes. They're right here. You can always watch them later. There's Paula, David Smock. Who's that? Beth Coddington. Hello, Beth Coddington. How are you? Speaking of Beth Coddington, uh, I was over at Lemonhead's show the other day. He had a he has these auctions and sales. Uh, Beth bought this and said, send it to Ken for the big show. And well, geez, it got here uh, what yesterday? Three days from California to Florida, and uh, Beth sent in a 2016 MS70 Silver Eagle. It's a gorgeous thing. Have a look at that. Here's the back. Looks like it. Looks like a regular Silver Eagle, except it's perfect. If you don't have a perfect coin, you want to get here for the uh, the big show tomorrow. Beth sent that in. God love her. Yeah, I just get to look at them for a little while, and then I send them out the door. Uh, the big show is on Saturday, uh, Sundays. Coin class is on, what day is this? Saturday. So, I get to open the mail on Saturday and see what's coming in. Because uh, people send in things for that big show. Uh, Lemonhead, of course, he's got all that stuff I had picked up. He sent in the uh, the Silver Eagle that Pat had picked up. And he also added a couple of proof nickels. 2005 Buffalo. That's a neat container, a little coin tain. All righty. Thought I'd show that off. And we got the, uh, oh, what, 2000? I, it, what's that mint mark? Oh, what's well, S? These are proofs. That's a 2005 S with ocean in view. And this one's upside down. The other side's right, though. I'm not sure what that's all about. Huh. But uh, we'll get these into the big show. Now, Mantic Coins. You're going to find him coming up right after the show at. Uh, 5.30 Eastern Time. I don't know what that relates to anywhere else. Beth says, it's the thought that counts. I'm thinking about you all the time. You can count on that. Lemon donated this one. Oh. Well, Jesus. That's like a big dollar coin. Huh. I thought that came from you. Lincoln out, bid you. Lincoln likes those Silver Eagles. He's a big fan. Anyway, getting back to where I was, uh, Shea Hoffmaster and Adriana Hoffmaster, they have a show, uh, let's see, Saturdays, right after the coin class. And last week, because they hit 500 subscribers, and they really should have, like, you know, 5,000 subscribers, uh, they had a little giveaway. And it was Platinum Week. I thought we'd open this up right here. Let's see what we got. Do, 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 do. Stuff just comes across this desk. I don't know what it's going to be. Oh, we got a note. He always puts in a note. I'm going to read the note and then show off what we got. Okay. Dear Ken, thank you for your support of our streams and teaching me a great deal about the details and nuances. Nuances. That's the word of the day, by the way. Uh, of coin buying and selling. Every time you go live, you set the bar higher and learning how to excel at this craft. Oh, and I'm learning how to excel at this craft. He's doing a great job. You scored a big win 
and the moderator win this time. Congratulations. Now, uh, he's doing a platinum show, right? He's giving away. Somebody had sent in these platinum quarters. He will he can explain it better than I do. Uh, and he had giveaways every hour during the show. But he had a big prize. It was big. Well, not in size. Let's see if I can open this without screwing it up. There we go. Oh, yeah. I've never owned one of these. Nobody really owns them anyway. We've got this little thing. Look, isn't that cute? Look at how cute that is. It's like a coin, only smaller. We'll have to put that under the scope. Oh, yeah. Let me open this up. That is a 2002 Platinum. Platinum. 0.99955. We can't focus. Platinum Eagle. So we got a Silver Eagle. Now we got a Platinum Eagle. i got to get the Gold Eagle next. I want to look at this under the scope real quick. Because I just opened it. I'm pretty excited. Let's see. Scope. There we go. Look at the color in this one. Let me set that aside. I was looking at that earlier. I don't want to take it out. It's uncirculated. And there's this cute little thing. There it is. Isn't that pretty? Um, a little smaller than a dime. 2002, in God we trust, Liberty, Statue of Liberty. That is the Platinum Eagle. You don't see many of these. Let me tell you, a $10 bill on a coin. Uh, in all, the whole program, the Platinum Eagle program, they made about uh, a quarter of a million of them. In all, uh, on this date, it was 23000 for 2002S for the $10 Platinum Eagle. Yeah, they're kind of tough to come up. And you just give it away. And I won something. I was pretty impressed with that. I never win anything. But I won that by God. And I had a giveaway for the moderators. I just want to look at this. It is a 1904 Barber Dime. Yeah, that's XF, every bit of it. Full Liberty, every leaf. On the eagle, I bet you. Oh, the eagle's on the quarters. This one's a dime. That's upside down again. I'm so confused. There we go. Wonderful detail in the leaves, the corn of the cob, the wheats. Kind of a nice thing. I thought I'd show that off, but I'm pretty proud of these. Uh, we'll do something with those in time. I'll take Shea stuff, I'll sell it, and then I put the money back into a show. Let me set that right up here. Make a little room with. Where does this stuff come from? God, it's everywhere. Now, Fritz Bender had a package he sent in, and this one's going to be hard to show because it's, you know, big. Let me set this aside. These nickels. Let's see if we can move this in here. Sorry, Paula, you're going to have to move. There's home. There we go. There's home. I'm going to have to move this. And uh, I've barely been into it. I cut the box open and took a quick gander. There's uh, everything you can imagine in here. We have the big note. And it's a big note. Look at this. He must have wrote for an hour. Professor Peavy. That's me. This is from Fritz Bender. Hope this helps. I believe I speak for the whole class uh, when I say we truly appreciate your passion for the hobby. Also, it takes a great man to give so much of his time to help others and explain in such great detail the ins and outs of the trade. I surely have learned more from you than anyone else on YouTube. Thank you very much. We hope to continue. We hope you continue your great work and continue to share with us. There are oddball items here, and even some beavers. Ooh, I like a beaver. Uh, when I was younger, it was so exciting to look at my hand and see a new beaver. Okay, he's talking about Canadian nickels, and uh, I had opened some of these up and taken a look. Good Lord, there's all sorts of things in here. We've got what have we got? We got some uh, silver pesos from Mexico. Big one up here. There's like three or four of them in there. We got some silver war nickels. Great Britain. I'm not sure what this is. 1898, 50 centavos. Did they have Mexican money back then? Did they have Mexico back then? There's Bermuda coins. Here's a Canadian 1858 large cent. Uh, here's a neat nickel. Right after World War II, the, uh, or during World War II, Canada redesigned their nickel because they changed the, uh, the composition. This one is chrome or steel. I'll have to look it up. 
Oh, here's some more Canadian dimes. I don't know what this one is. What do we got here? South Africa. I've never seen coins from South Africa. Let's see if we can get this one out. Here it is. What do you got? You got a guy here with with Isaac Sir Isaac Newton hair. And the back is uh you no, know, it looks like uh looks like the old West. You got a stagecoach. Uh South Africa, nineteen sixty one. Sweet Africa ninth one C. I don't know what that says. One C. Is that at one cent? What do they use for money in South Africa? Well, we'll look at it. But we got some uh, notes and interesting items in here. Some baseball cards. We'll add these to the uh, the big show. Uh, what's this one? San Antonio Spurs, 1976 ABA Championship. They're sticking to a championship game. Okay. Neat things in here. We'll get further into that another time. Uh, here's a giant peace on earth. May you, may the peace and goodwill of this holiday season abide with you through the new year. That's right. Don't give up on Christmas just because it's not Christmas. What is those beavers? They're down here. There's a whole bunch of things in this pouch. Uh, foreign coins. These are all circulated, so I can probably get away with this. There's a beaver. Huh? 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 There you go. Canada, they got a beaver on the back of their nickels. We've got beavers, beavers, a corona, corona, centavos. Here's a, a subway token. That's You can see these from a mile away. It's a sub subway token from New York City. A big pesos. Or something. 1959. Diaz. Uh, 10 cents. I don't know what this is. Australia. Here's 10 francs. Here's a Columbia 1952. There's everything in here. Good Lord. But we'll be putting these into the big show. Oh, wow. I, I totally missed. Okay. We had... I forget what this was. This is... Oh, that's a Canadian coin. That's a specimen... What? Dollar? Yeah. Canadian dollar. Wonderful thing. Queen Elizabeth on the other side. 1972. Got its own little case. Oh, some Mexican uh, pesos. Those big things. Now, now, I'm not sure what these are. They appear to be silver rounds. So we'll have fun giving those away. Somebody will take it. Uh, Republic of Liberia. You've got George Bush on, on one side. And you've got the uh, Liberian seal on the other. 2004. But I don't know what they are yet. I'll have to do a little investigation to figure that one out. Hmm. Manta Coins is here. Man, we open up the... Uh, what's this? Oh, and we got this giant thing. 20 crowns. I'm going to have to take this out. That's Turks and Caicos. 20 crowns. Now, here's a silver eagle beside it. It is dwarfed. So, that'll be probably the largest coin that we've given away in the big show. And I'll have to find out what's going on with that exactly. See, I get to learn stuff, too. Because you never know what's coming through the door next. Anyway, I'm going to pack this up real quick. Set that in nice and gently. We'll have a better idea what... Because I didn't have much time to look at that. It came in yesterday. There we go. And we got the uh, eagle we can get there. Let me set this back here. Yeah. That's what's going around. That's, that's what goes on around here. In all the meantime, I'm trying to, you know, cook some lunch. Made some bread today. It came out pretty good. Uh, I've been into it already. Just thought I'd show that off. I got a win tomorrow, says Beth. Well, I hope you do. Somebody ought to. We got some good stuff coming, let me tell you. Look, you can, you can win this. Yeah. Stick it back to Lincoln. Let's see who else is here. I've got Coin Finder. Coin Finder just found something pretty interesting. Shut the door. Um, 
I haven't seen it yet. He just posted a video. David Smock got his new USB scope with a great stand. Outstanding. Now, he had a uh, show, what, a week and a half ago? And people would just, just send him cash. Here you go. Get your scope. He got his scope. So now he can take that leap up to the next level. I'll have him for the show on Monday. Every Monday, 8 o'clock, he has a show. He's going to look at stuff. Mark Rossman's here. You got my message on those uh, BU rolls? What brand of USB did you get? I got an OptiTech about a week ago. Good product. CoinFinder did the braided hair scent video. I'll have to get in there and check that out. I got a neat one that came in the other day. Uh, this one, geez, is it, is it wonderful or isn't it? Here it is. I wanted to show this off just for the, the heck of it. It's an 1864, two cent, large model, just beautiful shape, except for that right in the center. Got a bit of a, a gash, but it's a just screaming gorgeous coin. Uh, the color and toning on this, the woody grain, is covers the whole darn thing. And it's big and, you know, bright and stuff. Mark Crossman, thanks for the great info on the BU rolls. Okay, glad to hear it. Look, we've got a, uh, we do a coin class every week. And you can, you know, well, you can tune in or not. It really doesn't matter. You can watch it afterwards. Uh, people are telling me, I'm getting emails all the time, people going back and watching previous coin shows and coin videos. And as they learn more stuff, they can go back and check out these previous shows and they pick up stuff that they missed before. You might want to consider that. Let me move this camera right for a bit. Uh, there's lots of information out there, and I'm kind of like, uh, I feed you a lot at a time, so you might miss some stuff. We'll pay attention as best as you can do, but go back and watch them again for the very first time. You're going to pick up something you haven't uh, seen or heard of before. I want to get into uh, today's topic. I have some notes. What do I do with those? Let me see if I can pull these up. There it is. Okay, we've got today axioms and ethics, or ethics and axioms if you'd prefer. Let's go home. No, no. I'm with the screen. Is this it? Here we go. Some shows I uh, show you coins. Other shows I'm just going to talk. This is a talking show. Okay, we're talking about ethics today. Uh, ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Uh, it's a set of guidelines, rules to live by. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to teach you how to live your life. Uh, but those people out there who have established themselves using some moral principles to help uh, govern their behavior, to lead them in direction, to help them make decisions based on uh, oh, some, some preset or uh, preconceived notions, tend to do better in their lives in, in every aspect. Now, we're going to look at these aspects and how they relate to coins. But uh, you can easily extend them into other areas of your life, and you'll find uh, it can help. It can further your, uh, it can further your situation, whatever your situation may be. Uh, moral principles, they're, they're not really that hard. It's not like we're talking about uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. These aren't, uh, these aren't commandments. Consider them as uh, uh, guidance or urgings or here's a, here's, you know, a pretty good idea, and you might want to use it, but if you don't, well, you're on your own there. The first one I'm going to talk about is do no harm. Uh, pretty good rule, right? Uh, it applies to pretty much anything you do. Don't screw it up. Don't frig it up. Don't damage it. Don't destroy it. Uh, they got these great national wonders out these national parks. Uh, people go out to these parks and well, if they, they chop down the trees in the national parks, well, it stops being a park. Well, don't do any harm so other people can enjoy it. These coins, as I mentioned, we don't really own them. We kind of own them for now, but they're going to far outlast us, that's for sure. Uh, we just looked at a two-cent piece from 1864. I've had it for a week. I've owned it for, you know, a week. Uh, I'll probably own it for another week. But for the previous 155 years, somebody else owned it. And it's going to, you know, I'm, I probably have another 30, 40 years left. And then somebody else will own this coin for another 200 years. It's just in our path for 
for a short time and how we take care of these coins, how we handle them, uh, how we store them is going to uh, have long lasting impact uh, for the hobby. The coins, they don't get better. They're only going to get worse. They're only going to take on wear. They're only going to take on damage. They're only going to take on toning. Uh, it's our job. It's our duty, if you will, or our responsibility. Or let's just say I urge you uh, to do no harm, to learn how to handle and store these coins properly for the long term. These coins are, they go way beyond us, uh, way past us. They outlive generations. What are you talking on this one? 1864, two cent, uh, 150 years, seven generations have passed since this one was produced and people have cherished it the whole time. At some point, scope, at some point, well, there's a little slip up. Now we've got a little little chop in it. But it's a gorgeous coin. It's going to last a whole lot longer than me, I can tell you that. I like that. Thing. Let me look at the back of that. No woody in the back. But uh, the sharpness and detail is exquisite here. And again, a little, uh, little blemish there by the U up in the wreath. Well, I just had to have it. Why not? Uh, protect your coins. Learn how to care for them. There are people that stick them in coffee cans. Well, it's, it's better than throwing it in the toolbox, I suppose, but you can improve beyond the coffee can. Go to an individual holder. Uh, step up to a holder that's designed for long-term storage. Uh, give your coins the attention they need so that they preserve their value. They stay in high quality. Or the, high, the highest quality they're, in, they're ever going to be in is how the, you have them right now. Uh, preserve that so other people in the future can you know, can enjoy these coins as well. Let me get back to where I was. Here's the screen. Yep, okay, number two. Uh, accuracy. Now, uh, this one's rather involved. Uh, geez, how do you be accurate? Is this a moral principle to be accurate? Well, you can look at it that way. Uh, I had some more notes on this, but they're buried in the pile. What we're trying to do is identify these coins. Uh, we're trying to explain to other people a lot of times because the hobby thrives on one person to the next, sharing information, explaining you know, what's going on with the, with the hobby, with the coin, with whatever date or variety or uh, a design that you're looking at. And if you don't know exactly what's going on well go ahead and find out there are plenty of research tools i put up videos on where to find information you can always jump to my blog and there's a uh, key information sites over there where you can find out more info information about all these coins um, but if you're able to learn and then share what you know and be accurate with what you're telling people well we're all going to do better here next one uh is activity now i put up a uh, quote just the other day I was typed, I typed this somewhere. I think it was in Mantic Show. Uh, activity builds experience. And experience builds confidence. What exactly is that supposed to mean? It means the more you do, the more you learn. The more you learn, well, you can just keep on going from there. I've said before, that there's nothing you can't do. And if, as soon as you start to believe that, it becomes true. Well, how would you make that true? Well, you start getting active. You search more coins. You look at more coins. You read more books. Read more articles. Uh, watch coin videos. They're all over this, all, all over the tube. Uh, get involved in discussions about coins. Just that activity is going to uh, to build that experience. You're gonna that's gonna take you to the next level, right? Activity. You learn. You understand. Uh, you have more experience. You become a uh, uh, well, you move up from, from amateur to novice, then from novice to master, from master to expert, and then you forget everything after that. Um, how far do you want to take this is entirely dependent on what you know uh, and entirely dependent on your, your level of confidence. And you can build your confidence just by getting out there, getting your hands dirty, seeing what's out there, uh, playing with these coins, if you will learning how to care for them, learning what it is, checking out their values. Uh, get active, really. Sitting on your hands isn't getting anywhere. Uh, don't be an armchair collector. Okay, number four, here we go. I had to, I took off number five and actually combined it. With, so there, there is no number five. 
there is no number five. There we go. Number four, share what you know. The story of the coin. Uh, share what you know about the coins, facts, information, the history of it. Every coin has a story. And it's the story that makes it all uh, really exciting. Uh, CJ was talking about those 20 centers a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they were 75 years in the making. And once they were produced, they lasted for well, pretty much two years, three years, and that was it. Nobody liked them, nobody cared. And after 75 years of effort, it was a flop. Ain't that a darn shame? Um, I did a story about the, uh, the Pilgrim Half Dollar and how that came into being. And these stories, well, they're great to share with the young people, I can tell you that, because there's the young people that uh, eat this stuff up, uh, especially the newer collectors. You really don't know what's behind the, uh, the Lincoln cent, right? Uh, the designer of the Lincoln cent, for example, uh, well, he was, out, he was an outsider in, in, uh, in the mint circles. Uh, he was a French designer. He originally came from Lithuania, uh, Victor Brenner. Now, he had a design for the Lincoln set, and he took it to Roosevelt, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. And Roosevelt said, this is a great design for a coin, and uh, made the decision to put it on the coin. So the mint engravers, of course, are, you know, right, they're feeling rather uh, left out of the, of the loop uh, because it didn't go through them. They had no part of that decision. Uh, Brenner went around them, and it was a presidential uh, decision to put, to put Lincoln on the coin. Now, you get these coin books. Uh, they pass around. Uh, you read it. You find out what's in it. You review it a few times. But eventually, you're going to be done with that book. And by done, there's nothing more you can gain from it. Pass those books on to the next person. We'll get a little... Uh, I, I, I pass out a bunch of books, but I'd like to see more people passing out more books. And, you know, you read it and pass it on. Jeez, how about try signing it? That'll be neat. I'm going to take a break and go to uh, the chat for just a bit catch up there because I tend to be long-winded. I miss all the good stuff. Okay, I'll come back over here. I'll go to the scope. I'm going to put the, put the eagle under there so you can look at that gorgeous thing. Oh, did I tell you the name of the uh, the plant there? I guess that's a... Uh, what the heck was the name of that? Um, it was a joke and I forgot the punchline. Oh, well. What's that? It's going around Facebook. Did he say Laurel or did he say something else? Well, I blew that one. I should have wrote that note down better. Let me catch up over here in chat, see who's here. There's David Smock, Joe Bunn. Thanks for coming in. Steve Goering. Haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you. Good decision. Yes, it was. The Lincoln Center is so iconic of the USA. Great design. Still impressive. I've got one here somewhere. I swear it. What's this? They're everywhere, man. I don't know what this is. It's a, oh, right, it's a 1952D. They're just sitting around here. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's a Yanny Laurel. That was my punchline, and I blew it. I suck at this. I'm going to go back to the circus. There's Elsie Stevens. Yeah, how many, how many coins has she been on? A whole bunch of them. That's a per that's what a perfect coin looks like. I bet you that little yeah that that little speck right over here that's on the case it moves when I tilt it. Here's Sam the eagle. Perfect. Yeah, we'll give this away tomorrow. They're they're beautiful when they're when they're set up right, and they're Shelly H. Good to have you, Shelly. I'm gonna get back in. Let me find the screen again. I'm caught up in the chat. People are chatting. And I lost my place. No, nope, that's not it. I have totally lost my place. Here we go. Okay, six. There is no number five because I moved that. Six is take it to the next level. And again, uh, you apply it to the coins, but extend it to the rest of your life. Move forward with whatever your situation is. Um, you start with coin, you collect them from uh, circulation. There's a progression here. Everybody goes, well, a lot of people go through it. Uh, you gather them out of pocket change. You go through rolls. You start searching rolls, massive coins, and pulling things out. As you learn more, you can draw more out of circulation, more value out of circulation, more value out of those, uh, those bank rolls. You, know, you can always take it to the next level. 
Uh, there's always one more step you can go. And this goes for, for everybody. Uh, there are levels that have not yet been discovered. And I think coin ethics might be a new level for, uh, for the whole hobby. But we'll just talk about it. Um, you move from collecting, uh, you know, neat coins to, to putting together complete sets. You can put together a complete set of memorial sets, uh, well, almost complete, right out of circulation. Uh, take it to the next level and go for the, the wheat design. That's going to be tough, but you can probably get there. But at some point, you're going to get to a point where you can't get the coins that you need out of circulation. You've got to step up to buying. There's a whole can of worms just in there. Uh, you get into buying and you're replacing a coin that you have. Uh, now, what do you do with the one, you know, the, the second rate coin that you have? Jeez, you, you just bought a, an AU 1909 BDB. What do you do with the XF 1909 BDB? Well, you can start a backup set or, well, put it up for sale. And again, you're stepping into a uh, new area. You're getting to buying and selling their darn things. That is a, uh, it's a key part of the hobby. Uh, buying, selling, trading. What do you do with the coins you don't need anymore? The, the lesser pieces. Because there's always somebody out there who's a level below you and, your second red coin would, would probably be his best. Uh, keep on progressing. And you can do this whole thing with the rest of your life. You can extend it to, into what you're doing now. Move up, uh, take your job. And what would it take to move up to a, to another position, uh, a different department, uh, operate a, a store in another town, uh, become the supervisor, a lead man, or, or foreman, or or assistant manager. Um, there's a lot more out there, and all you got to do is have the taste for it, and you can extend it from coin collecting. Instead of just going after a much nicer set, well, go after a much nicer set and pay for it with a much nicer job and store the whole thing in a much nicer house. You ever read Jonathan Livingston Siegel? I recommend that book. We're going to go to number seven because I'm babbling here. Uh, build collectors, build the people. Okay, and I've said this before, it's not so much about the coin. Uh, the coins are static, they're inert. Much of the, of the hobby, much of it, has to do with the community of people that you, uh, you develop around you. Uh, you make the contacts, the people who buy, the people who sell, the people who trade, the people have, who have lesser collection than you and are looking for what you have. Uh, Involve the young collectors. Teach them how it all works. Uh, Paula's got a daughter who was uh, just signed up, and Paula's getting pretty excited because the daughter's starting to learn all about coins. Uh, you can involve your kids in this. It becomes a family affair. Uh, really, the best way to see that your, your collection is more valuable in the future is to uh, get more collectors. Now, number eight, when you get there... Uh, because this goes back to number six, right? Take it to the next level. So you, there's levels out there you're not at yet uh, or may not be at. Maybe you've already surpassed them. When you get there, here's a great ethic for you. Good coins, fair prices. Real simple. Uh, I think this one gets into uh, not selling items that are, that are less than you're described. You want to have accuracy in the coins you're describing. You want to have fair prices, and again, be accurate. And that goes back to, what was it, number three? Number two, accuracy. This goes all through it. You want to be right, correct, uh, good information, good coins, fair prices. I see it all the time on eBay. I go searching for e eBay for values. And... Uh, they've got some junky coins on there, no question about it. And for exorbitant prices... How does this happen? Is it somebody who's just out there trying to figure maybe somebody will buy it and by God, I'll put some cash in my pocket because if that's all you're looking for, this really isn't a hobby for you. Go sell used cars or something. Right? Have a yard sale. You'll never see those people again. I guarantee it. You start selling junk. Uh, good coins. Uh, we're talking stuff that's uh, um, it's not fake. You have to be able to identify those things. If you're going to have good coins, you have to you know, see what's out there and uh, look for quality. You've got uh, big scratches across the face. 
well, it's an okay coin, but it's not really all that great. Uh, what would the value be for a coin with a big slash across it? Because it's not going to be what the book says. You've got an impaired coin, you're going to have an impaired price. Well, you can have a fair, co a fair price on a screwed up coin. But really, let's take that plunge and move into coins that don't have problems. Because those are the ones that are the most collectible. Okay, number nine, we talked about briefly a, a few moments ago, it's justice. It's not the coin, it's the people, right? Uh, if you're going to have a coin, you're going to market that coin. Um, you're not getting a good price of the coin. You're taking money from somebody. And if you're going to take money from somebody, you better give them a product that's worth it. That's what I'm talking about as far as justice. All too often I see people get excited because, hey, I just sold this coin for $50. Uh, it should have been worth, you know, 25 Did you uh, make a great deal or did you rip somebody off? That's injustice. Uh, the coin hobby, it's the people that are involved. You're going to drive them away if you don't treat them fairly. Uh, you have to do people properly. Do them right. Because it's all about the people. We got coins, but it's all about the people. And if you're not being fair and just with the other people, you got no business being in this hobby. Now, extend this to the rest of your life. Number 10, do no evil. And this is part of justice, but it's I had to extend it. Because uh, I was talking with Paula about well, what would you put in there for coin ethics? And uh, she gave me a few list of things here. Do no evil, right? Again, you're not, uh, you're not screwing people over by offering them a, a junky coin for an exorbitant price or, or overcharging for shipping uh, when you can perfectly well um, charge a fair price or for what you're shipping. Uh, don't be small and petty and, and extend that to the rest of your life. Uh, teach people rather than insult. All too often in these social groups I see people saying, dude, you don't know what that is? You can't tell that that's a damaged coin? A lot of times, yes, they can't. They are brand new to the hobby and they don't know what a damaged coin looks like. Uh, they're coming up with ideas like this is an error. What kind of error is this? Um, well, it's got a fork stuck in it. That's not really a mint error. But you don't have to insult the person. Uh, you want to teach them rather than insult and rather than boast. And I somehow had that on two lines, so I'll just take that out. Because I intend to make this a, uh, there we go. I'll make this a uh, an article on the blog. More stuff. There's nothing wrong with saying please and thank you. Uh, somebody sends in a coin to give away. I go out of my way to try to remember or write down a record who sent it, what they sent, and to say thank you, by God, for sending that in. I don't keep these coins. I get to look at them for a little while. It's going to go on to somebody else, and they're going to be thank you, thankful. And they may not be able to say thank you right away. So if you're sending something in, thank you so much, uh, because somebody's going to enjoy it. Uh, but please and thank you, you can do that everywhere. It takes nothing to be appreciative and, and say it. It may be the coins we talk about, but these are people we deal with. Treat them right. Treat them with respect. Uh, be patient with them. It is all too easy to, uh, to have your head swell to such a size that you're better than people. Well, you're not. Uh, I'm not. That's for darn sure. Number 11. Excellence in all things. How you handle the coin. How you store the coin. How you... Uh, describe it. If you're selling it, taking the photos. Excellence. There's nothing wrong with being excellent. Dude, take it up a notch and go from doing a mediocre job to being excellent. Strive. Number 11 is all about pushing yourself. Uh, gosh, I could talk about this all day. Uh, all too often we get into a, a rut in our lives where um, Pushing for a new level, pushing into, you know, a different uh, venue, uh, experiencing things you haven't experienced before, uh, it just kind of stops. You just get into a kind of a groove and you stay right there. And things can become complacent. And if you're becoming complacent, you're really not, really not striving for excellence. It is the excellence that you strive for that makes it all worthwhile. Get in there and learn this hobby. Uh, become excellent at it, and by excellent meaning mean knowledgeable, 
right? Informational, you're helping other people, you're teaching other people. Become excellent at that. The more you teach, the easier it, 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 the easier it becomes to teach. Number 12 is make the journey worthwhile. Now, where do you want to go with your hobby? Uh, do you just want to collect wheat pennies out of, uh, out of circulated rolls? Because if, if that's all you're trying to do, that's not going to really be worthwhile over time. You might, you might amass 100,000 pennies, but they're all worth four cents a piece, three cents a piece. You could do so much more with those. How about if you sell off a whole bunch of those, uh, invest in more coins, you sell those off, and then buy a house? Now you're making the journey worthwhile. It's not just the coins in the collection. It's the progress. It's improving that collection. And you get a full set of uh, 1940 to 48 Roosevelt dimes. I'm sure they're beautiful. How about get the whole set? And then use that set to improve your situation. There's a whole journey out there. A lot of people, uh, you know, they're... They're young, they're 12, 15, 18, 20, 30 years old. They really haven't explored the journey very far. Now I'm going to take a break here because we're up to the axioms. I'm going to find the chat if I can do that. There it is. And I'm going to put this back to home. There it is. There, now I can see and talk up with chat for just a bit. Oh boy, look at that thing scroll here. Adrian is here, Matt Penn, Mark Ross, Pawn Shop. Not Pawn Show. Coin Edict 101. Not Edict. Axiom. Yeah, well, you can call it rules. You can call them axioms. You can call them edicts. You can call them commandments. Whatever works. Whatever you like, just go with it. Yes, Mark, how we should live our entire lives. There we go. I'm catching up with Beth. Beth, if you watch her show, uh, she is all about the people in the community. Seriously, uh, this is what this is one of the, one thing I like about Beth so much. She will get involved in the chat, and I've been trying real hard after watching her 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 live streams to get involved more with the chat because the coins there there is the coins are nice, no question. That's a that's a glorious piece. That must be a hair. There it's gone. No question, that's a glorious piece of coin. Right, but over here, the chat, that's what people are here for. Have, you know, there's no question that's what a peeveism. They're here for the chat. The chat is what makes it all worthwhile. Let me see. I want to back up just a bit. This is absolutely such great advice Ken is giving us. Please smash the like button. Oh, yes, by all means, smash the like button. The more times, the, the higher the number of likes a video gets on YouTube, the more it is, you know, pushed to the top of the list when people are doing a search uh, or checking similar videos. So, it, you know, it helps me because more people tend to see the video. And it helps the people because, oh, they try to put out, you know, good, accurate information. Beth, if I start big and beautiful numismatics and I'm president, would you be my VP? I bet you she would. But she ain't bringing you a copy. If you want to get our donation in early for tomorrow's big show, donate to PayPal Goods and Services. Oh, thank you, Lincoln. You're going to find it right up here if you would like to do that. Um, lots of ways to support the channel. Uh, and when you send cash, it goes into the big show. You're supporting not so much me. You're supporting the hobby. Because somebody's going to get these coins. And, dude, uh, look at this. Look what we'll give it away tomorrow. That thing is perfect. It is. It says right here, MS-70. Perfect Silver Eagle. That's the 30th anniversary. They started in, in, in 86. My grandmother had picked me up a, uh, a 1986 Eagle. Well, I had later sold it off to pay for the light bill. That's a good-looking piece right there. Let me catch up more with the chat here. I agree at Adriana. I missed that one. 20 minutes north of Austin, Lincoln. I don't know where Austin is. I think it's the middle of the state there. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to collect, says Crystal. Uh, what do you like? Jeez. I get this all the time. People say, what should I collect? 
whatever you want. What do you like to collect? Do you like pennies, nickels, dimes? Is there a specific size, denomination? I recommend it, whatever you collect, you collect really nice ones, right? You, I recommend you collect all of them. Uh, get the whole darn set. I lost something here. Here we go. Instead of just uh, instead of just getting, you know, a 2016 Silver Eagle, how about get every darn date they ever made? How about get every single mint mark they ever made? How about instead of just getting them, you know, raw and uncirculated, get them all that are perfect? Because now you've got something that's going to be an impressive set. It's not just you're going to impress other people. You're going to impress yourself. Look what I have done. There's confidence to be built in there. Um, if you don't know what to collect, start with the simple stuff, the low-hanging fruit. Uh, get out your pocket change and save one of every date. All right, Everything. Penny, nickel, dime, quarter, half. Everything. Save one of every date. You get more change. Have a look at what's in there, and if it's better than what you have, throw that one out, or spend it, or sell it, or better yet, save it, and buy coins. And just keep steadily improving that collection that way. Uh, it won't take too long, and you'll, jeez, not enough pocket change to look through. I need more coins to look through so I can build this set faster and better. Now you're stepping into the, uh, the coin searching, coin roll hunting realm. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there to find. Where's it? Here we go. Oh! Let's see if I can put this in the in the picture here. There you go. You get into this. You get into this stuff where you're going through massive rolls of coins, looking to complete your set or improve your set. You get them at one bank. You open them up. You look at them. You pick out the best. You pick out the ones you don't have. Right? You can get into searching for errors and varieties, and there's a whole new world all by itself. Uh, then you got to find another bank so you can take the stuff back, so you get some more money, so you get some more coins. And really, if you're doing it this way, you're getting these coins at face value, and you can get some you can get some great stuff for for pennies, <coughs> literally pennies. Let's see. Let me get this out of the way. Oh. <sighs> I rolled, those, I rolled those up the other day while watching Mantic stream. So, yeah, it's it's not only informative and entertainment, it's practical. You can get something done during the show. Keep stepping up, Crystal. You go from the, the roll hunting, then you get into, you know, trading with other people. Because you'll have some extra things. And you've got two, you know, 2,000 whams. Well, geez, this one's really nice. You keep that. And then you got this extra one. And there's somebody else. He's got a 98 wham who doesn't have a, a 2,000 trade, huh? And you're building more complete set that way. That's White's law. And if you want to look that one up, I don't need to get into it. But you can uh, use each other as a source to to improve your collections. This is this is why we want to form a community. This is why we all talk to each other. Uh, what do I have that you don't have? Maybe we can we we can arrange a trade. Steve says, I've been with the same bank for 20 years. They stage stuff for me. Hey, we got 10 rolls of walking Liberty Habs at face value. Do you want them? Nah, you keep them. Yeah, there are relationships. You, 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 you build these relationships over time, not just with other collectors. As Steve says, you can build them with your bank teller. Your bank teller? Wow, if you can build that sort of relationship, there's a slide in the back door to some really good stuff. People drop it off all the time. I gotta blow my nose, so just wait one moment here. I'm gonna take you to here. Look at the screen for a bit. That's what I see. There it is. Yeah, I had the cat in earlier. He gets he gets hair everywhere. Okay, I think I'm okay. Find my way back. There's home. There, I can see. But uh, eventually, I was talking with uh, with Crystal. Eventually, Crystal, you're going to find uh, a particular series or a particular kind of coin uh, or quality of coin or color or tone. You're going to find something that you want to collect the most. Me, I like those. Uh, I like those Drake Bus half sets. I like half sets. I like two cents. I'm a big fan of silver. There's nothing wrong with silver. 
There we go. There is nothing wrong with silver. All right. Do you like copper? I'm a big fan of copper. It just looks better to me. Some people say, you're wasting time on copper. Um, we'll try nickel. If you want to try something really interesting, why bother with copper and silver? Go for the platinum. There you go. Now that's stuff that nobody collects. This thing is shining like a new dime. Let's see if I can show you the color on this. Brilliant. Now that's a bobble right there. Yeah, that's a bobble. And I could get like the whole island of Manhattan for this coin 300 years ago. Kind of a neat thing. Well, we can't see it. We'll never get this camera to focus. Never. Ain't going to happen. There it is. You're going to find your way around. Um, there's no rule on how to get started. You have to find your own path. What you what you collect now is probably going to be different from what you collect in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. You evolve with a hobby. The hobby will change and so will you. Um, so whatever you're doing, do it the best you can so that when you change and you're doing something else, you got it covered here. My laptop is lagging. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm going to move on. And says, I like two, three, half times, large cents, half cents, half cents, seated liberties. Try the 20 centers. I think CJ is hooked on the 20 centers now. I've got one of those one-tenth platinum eagles. I've got one. I'm going to hold on to it for a while. They're pretty slick. Uh, not too many of them. Ken just got rid of a one. Just got ride. You just got rid of a one-tenth ounce platinum Britannia. Um. That's a British coin. Got that girl. I've got one around here somewhere, but it's it's copper and it's good for like a half a penny or something. Love those too. Also love Canadian cents. I don't think I have one right here. What's this one? Yeah, here you go. There you go. Here's that two center. Right here. Nope. There you go. Here's two cents. Here's a Here's a one cent Canadian. That's bigger than that two cent. Let me put this Lincoln right on top so you can see what we're talking about. The inside of the, the beads is about the size of a Lincoln. Get off of there. Uh, not a whole lot of years in these large cents. I mean, if you get 30 different, you've got most of a collection. They're affordable. Okay, maybe not this one. This one's kind of a neat one. It has large, no, small leaves, has a small date, and has an obverse design number three, which you can tell by that uh, that chin, that grossly excessive chin. Kind of a neat one. Uh, there are as many die varieties on Canadian coins as there are in America. There's just a lot more American coins. To keep an eye out there's a we just looked at that box here we go is it american coins that you like or do you want to get into everything else the world has to offer you've got medals medallions you've got art rounds silver rounds what's this one five dollars marshall islands no that's liberia and i think it's a it's a proof where do you want to take it uh, I collect whatever strikes my fancy. Tokens, medals, exonumia, these big, giant, whatever things. 20 crown. There you go. There you go. 20 crowns from Turks and Caicos. That's a, that's a little south of here. Not too far south. Here's this guy. He looks pretty grumpy. Oh, it's Churchill. Well, he might have been a little grumpy. Uh, foreign coins. You got 200 countries that exist now. You got, what, 1,500 countries that no longer exist? But their coinage carries on. I can't get my fingers on this. Here we go. What's this? Have you got one of these? It's a 15 Banny. Name the country. Go ahead. I think it's Moldavia. And it's, no, it's Romania. That's around there somewhere. 
There you go. They got neat coinage. What you can collect, uh, what you do collect, there's a huge gap in between. This is a subway token from New York City. You put that in that little slot, you go through the gates, you're on the subway. Anybody's ridden the subway in the 70s and 80s will know exactly what this thing is. There it is. About that big. Got a big Y in the middle. Let's see, here's Australia. Elizabeth, who, and this has a weird critter on the back. Uh, what is that? Is that one of those lizards that puts their, you know, they get, they get the wings that come out? They hiss, eat your babies. Man, you watch out for Australia. That place is twisted. But the coins are neat. That's a, that's a beaver. See? I like a nice beaver. I'm going to check this for dive riders real quick. Okay, looks good. What's this one? I've never seen this before, ever. It's an island krona. Uh, I, what, Iceland? It's got no words. It's an island krona. 1975. Got a dragon or something. Got a cow. Maybe it's a Greenland coin. I'd have to look that up. Looks like an alien. There it is. That's as much information. It's one Krona. Um, there are so many coins out there you can collect. This one's really slick. Three. Yeah. Okay. We'll get these from time to time. These are thick. That's a British three pence. And you get the funny little sides, the octagonal sides. And check out the thickness on this. It's like a, it's like a hockey puck. The little one is a Lincoln set. Big fat one. You can just collect coins that have ships on it. There she is. I like these. They're just huge, thick. Let me put this over here real quick. Home. There you go. No collection is complete without this. Well, we can't see it. The heck with it. Where do you want to take your collection? That's what it comes down to. You love saying that, don't you? What I say. I, I said so much in the past two minutes. It's hard to keep up. Let me try to keep this together. But your collection will lead you where you want to go. Don't worry about a thing. Just start collecting whatever you like, and your collection will tell you where to go. Swiss coins look similar. I, I don't think Switzerland's in an island. Have any old Australian pennies with a kangaroo? There's I saw Australian here somewhere. Uh, but it had that uh, had that lizard on it. I love a good beaver. Me too. You watch over the bad beaver. Let me put that right here. Because Beth wants to win that tomorrow. There you go. We'll let you stare at these for a bit. Okay, we talked about uh, We talked about ethics, and it's it's these are moral principles. Uh, to help you determine how you how you respond, how you react, how you behave within the hobby. And it's not always just the coin, it's how you interact with the people that are in the hobby. Because if you're interacting with a coin, a lot of times it's it's like this. That's this is coin interaction. The ethics apply to how you treat and how you deal with everybody else. And that's key to the whole operation. If you don't treat them well, your hobby is not going to go as far. Oh, I love a good beaver. That's what you love to say. I have to put together Beth's comments, and then I can uh, then I can work out what she's saying. I wish that I grabbed the 1929 Susie scent for a dollar. Susie. 1929. 1999, perhaps? Well, I got one here somewhere. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of these. What do you got here? What do you got? Screen. There's a 1999 Susie, Susie dollar. Boy, that's an ugly cur. Let's go back home before we have to poke our, our eyes out. Aussies. Australian Susie. Uh, don't, don't they have a Matilda? 
uh, the walking Matilda dime or something like that. I'm just going to sit in a corner over here. That's all right. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, axioms. Now, axioms are different. Um, where do we go? Let me find my way. One moment, one moment. Okay, an axiom is a statement or proposition that is regarded as being established, accepted, or self-evidently true. That's not what I want. There we go. So I'm going to take over my blog here real quick. Uh, so I just get to go into typing sometimes. And I type so fast it takes. I have to wait until I'm done typing to go back and read what I what I wrote. A lot of times I type so much. Okay, this is a one million pennies project. Uh, right up here at the top, you see it. One million pennies project .com. If you look below the video, you'll find a link to it, and there's all there's all kinds of stuff up here. One of them is coin roll hunting axioms, and if you give me time, I'll paste the link uh, to this particular article down below. Uh, we got a few kind of rules to live by. Um, what was the word I was using before? Uh, Tenay. Principles. These are self-evident. Okay, number one. There's exceptions to every rule. Except for rule number one. Which would mean that there would be no exceptions. Well, you have to work with the logic on that one. Uh, only estimates have only estimates are proof, unless you go back in time and you realize you know they made, made them in Philadelphia in 1964. Uh, they stopped making silver in 1964. No, they kept up going with the half dollars, you know, 40 percent up through 1970. And then they made some more silver in '76, and in '92 they started doing silver all over again. Uh, okay, geez, they stopped making gold coins in '33. Except that they started making them again not too long ago. Yeah, there's exceptions to every rule. It's really hard to come up with a, uh, a solid rule because there are so many caveats in this hobby. Uh, only, only Philadelphia and San Francisco have made proof sense. Does that make sense? No, there's caveats on that. Okay, keep on going. Number two, inspect every coin. Okay, would we have that bucket of pennies down my feet here? Um, People go through these rolls, they hunt for the silver, they hunt for the 40%, the 90%, and they pull some out from time to time. They go through the nickels, they get the war nickels, the buffaloes, the V nickels. Right? They go through pennies, they pull out their Canadians, their wheats. And they throw the rest all back to the bank. Well, the good money is not in the wheats. The good money is not in the 40 percenters. The good money is in those die varieties. If you're not going through for, for die varieties and you're, you're checking, you know, thousands of rolls of coins you're sending all the money back to the bank I mean if you're just trying to put together a set of, uh, of wheats that's great but there's a whole lot more in those rolls than just uh, than wheats or 40 percenters the die varieties is where the money is if you want to get into these rolls number three when in doubt keep it I get a lot of people who say to me is this coin worth keeping should I keep this you know, if you're going through these rolls of coins and you're getting these coins at face value, the coin is a nickel, well, why not keep it? I'd say it's worth keeping a nickel. Uh, if nothing else, you'll have a nickel later on if you decide not to keep it. But uh, until you have the experience uh, to decide on your, on your own whether or not it's, it's worth keeping, well, go ahead and keep it. That way you can always get rid of it and there's no guilt. Number four, start with the assumption of damage. I got this two center over here somewhere. Let's have a look at that. Uh, scope. There, that's not it. That's damage. Got to start with the assumption of damage when you see that thing. That got run over by a truck. Okay, people will put up damaged coins all the time. You got a little ding right in the center of this one. There you go. And they say, is this a, what kind of error is this? Start with the assumption of damage first. And then you can say, is it something, is it something besides damage? Nine times out of ten, it's going to be, you know, damage. Errors are rather rare. That's why people collect the darn things. Uh, die varieties are rather rare. That's why people collect the darn things. Damage, you'll see it all the time. And until you get through 10,000 coins, 20,000 coins, 50,000 coins, 
it can be confusing. You don't know, well, is it or isn't it? Because some people just don't know. So when you don't know, well, keep the coin. Don't cost nothing. This cost, what, two cents out of the roll. Well, back in the day. How did they do that? They, they sent them around in sacks back in the day. They didn't do rolls of two centers. I've had a roll of two centers. Kind of neat. Yeah, they put them in quarter rolls. That's a good looking piece. Let's get back to uh, where we were. Home? No. Nope. Screen? Yeah. There it is. Okay, so when in doubt, keep it. That's a good rule. It's not going to steer you wrong. Number four, start with the assumption of damage. Most oddities and anomalies are the result of damage. Contact damage, machine doubling, stains, discoloration, heat, contamination can all alter the appearance of a coin. All too often, new collectors start with the assumption that the coin is a mint error. That's a wrong way to go about it. By assuming damage, you must then prove the coin is an error of variety. And in doing so, you prove your claim. Number five, nobody is right. What does that say? Nobody knows it all, or is 100% right all the time, except for Ken Potter. That guy knows everything. Uh, be willing to uh, admit errors, to admit mistakes. I've made mistakes, God knows. Jeez, I spent, I spent the last 50 years just making mistakes just about every day. That loaf of bread I made earlier. Did you see this loaf of bread I made? Home. It's a good looking loaf of bread. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? You can just hard as a rock. And I got 25, 30 years in restaurants. I can cook, but I can't make a loaf of bread. Coins? I kind of know what I'm talking about most of the time. But every now and then I make a mistake. Screen. Scope. Screen. That's what I want. I had somebody put up a uh, photo, I don't know, a few months ago. Um, and I took a quick glance. I said, this is this is damaged. Now the guy says, what's going on with this coin? I, I look at it and I said, this is damaged. It wasn't damaged. It was a tremendously valuable struck through coin. Uh, all the marks on Lincoln's face? No, that was some sort of debris that got on the uh, coin. Uh, and it was struck through the debris. It was a magnificent piece. I was totally wrong. If you're going to be wrong, and you will, be able to admit that. Sorry, I'm wrong. Here's what's really going on. Or you should take that guy's advice. The whole thing, if you're putting up a coin and asking people for advice, uh, listen to what the crowd says. Because a lot of times the crowd is going to give out uh, some good information. You might have one person who's a little off in one direction. Somebody else is off in another direction. But uh, generally, uh, eight people are saying it's mechanical doubling, or eight people are saying it's damage. They're probably right. You might have one or two that'll say, oh, that's freaking lathe lines. Okay, that one's out of nowhere. Okay, axiom number six, price lists are price guides. Uh, this whole hobby has a huge amount of fluidity to it, right? You can't... Uh, you can't uh, set rules because there's so many darn exceptions, right? Price guides, price lists, they're, uh, they're suggestions. They're not written in stone. I had a guy try to sell me, well, he was insisting that I pay him uh, market value for the coin. Well, geez, you know, I'm in business to, uh, to make a few bucks. Well, that coin's worth $50, and I want my $50. Well, you're not going to get it from me. Well, it's worth $50. Not to me. Well, should be. It's what the vice guy says. Don't argue. Uh, the market value is determined on what the buyers are willing to pay. Now, you put a coin up at auction or you put a, put a coin up for sale, the right buyer might not be there at that time, and you're not going to get the best value you can. Does that make any sense at all? I mean, there's somebody who's going to buy your coin and they're going to pay top dollar, but if they're not around to buy it, you're not going to get it. you got to realize those price guides are just guides. Sometimes values go up and down. Sometimes a, a whole lot of coins will hit the market all at once, and the price guides will, will not reflect that. Uh, you look at the auction records, they'll show a tremendous dip or a tremendous spike, but the price guides are kind of, uh, kind of even. Now, the bread book says this price. 
Uh, USA Coin Books has another price. Numis Media has another price on its own. Uh, Numismatic News, they've got a price guide. Which one's right? Well, they're all right. They're just using different data and uh, different algorithms come, to come up with those prices. Uh, their suggestions, their industry averages, you got to take it with a grain of salt and be flexible. Uh, it's really worth whatever the guy in front of you is willing to pay. And if, you don't want, if he's not interested, it's not really a valuable coin. Number seven, coin collecting is a hobby of accumulation and a journey of personal development. And really, I ought to split that into two. And it's a hobby of accumulation. You gather things, right? You gather coins. You gather coin holders, folders, albums, flips, cardboard flips, vinyl flips. You're going to get these little sets. You're going to get baggies. You're going to get tubes, boxes, uh, scopes, loops, lanyards, cameras, uh, computer, printer, file cabinet, shelves. There is no end to the sorts of things you can accumulate. Uh, I got two rooms full of stuff. And really, I need to get into a third room because there's more stuff coming. Uh, the mail just got dropped off about a half an hour ago. It's a hobby of accumulation, but it's not just things that you accumulate. right? There's also information, there's knowledge, there's wisdom, there's experience that you accumulate. Uh, there are personal relationships you'll accumulate, right? There, there's a personal development going on in here. You get to know people. This is where the chat comes in really handy uh, on these videos because you're going to see these people over and over again in other channels, and you'll get to know who they are. You'll start to anticipate their responses. Uh, you'll find out what sorts of things they like to collect. Well, geez, you got a question about a certain thing, and you know that guy collects it, Ask. He's right there. You'll get to know him. He'll get to know you. Uh, you accumulate things. Well, let the people and those relationships be one of those things that you, that you accumulate. Axiom number eight, verify authenticity. Again, this goes back to accuracy we were talking about uh, earlier with the ethics. Make sure it's the right thing. Make sure it's a, it's a genuine coin. If you can't determine if it's a genuine coin, contact those people that you know who can because you're spending your time out in the last and back here you're spending your time getting to know who knows what say so, hey man what do you know about this coin right here here's a photo because the proof is in the pudding uh, go as far as you can on your own get help when you have to number eight and this is a general rule assume doubling is not a double die Always make that assumption first. I see doubling on my coin, and they stick it up there. Is this a is this a double die? No, it's machine doubling. No, it's die deterioration. Uh, always start with the assumption that it's not a double die, but something else, and then prove your case after that. Because if you can then prove your case, well, then you are already working on uh, axiom eight, which is verifying authenticity. Axiom nine is kind of related. If the doubling on the date is the same as the doubling on the mint mark, it's going to be machine doubling every single time. you got to realize the mint mark was added separately from the die. So the die went in and was doubled. Okay, you're going to have a doubled die. Then, after the die was made and doubled, then the mint mark was punched in. So if you've got doubling on a coin, it would not be on the mint mark. So if you have doubling on the date and the mint mark, then it was done after the mint mark was added. It was done during the strike. It's machine doubling. Axiom 10. When coin raw hunting, persistence is better than luck. Let's get, this gets back into uh, activity uh, builds experience, and experience builds confidence. right? And, and it's all about persistence. You don't have to be lucky in this. You just have to stick with it. Because those coins are out there. You just have to get through enough of them. I don't know how many is enough. I'm still looking for my good, uh, my good stuff, um, but persistence is gonna, it's gonna beat it all. It's gonna beat uh, the statistics. You're gonna find it eventually. You might have to search for 120 years to find a 1969 S double die, and you might only live for 119 years. Well, improve the way you do it, maybe you can get through those. Number eleven. If all you're doing is searching for wheats and silver, you're leaving the big money behind. We talked about that earlier. Axiom 12 is suppress the desire to announce your new find. And this goes back to uh, 
oh, several of these other things. Uh, have you already checked that the coin is authentic and genuine? Is your, uh, is your assumption accurate? Is your diagnosis or identification, is it accurate? A lot of people that come out and say, look, I just found this you know, 1996 Wham! And you look at it and you say, um, no, that's a fork stuck through the penny again. We saw this earlier. Sometimes people announce things, they're really excited. And I understand that. But they, well, let's make sure we get our, our T's crossed and our I's dotted. Axiom 13, this is one of my favorites. If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Beth, you're doing it right. I guarantee you. Number 14, a key indicator that something is not rare is when you have lots of them. Uh, I saw this one fellow, he's sending messages and putting up pictures. He said, look, I found, you know, uh, 128 double dice in that last box. I'm thinking, is this a, your first time with a loop? He says, yep. Okay. We can assume that because you have 127 of them, that it's not rare. Because rare coins are hard to find, and you just find a slew of them. Uh, that should be a, a key indicator. Uh, this is a guy that found, uh, you know, a dozen 1982D small date copper cents. I think there's an error here. Uh, work on it. Number 15, activity. Oh, yeah, I put it over here. I moved it from the, uh, from the uh, ethics over here because it's appropriate here. Activity builds experience. And experience builds confidence. And I've said this before so many times. There's nothing you can't do. Nothing. You just need the confidence. Because once you believe you can do it, you can do it. How do you get the confidence? Through experience. How do you get experience? Through activity. This is why I say as soon as you believe this statement, it becomes true. All you got to do is be active to gain experience, to gain the confidence, and then there's nothing you can't do. Seriously. What do you want to do? Where do you want to take it? Because you can get there. Sometimes all you need to do is try, and you'll get there eventually. Number 16, the more assumptions that, needed, that are needed to prove a theory, the more likely it is to be wrong. Now, this coin was posted in another group, and the lady was saying, what kind of error is this? <coughs> well, some people said, cool error. No, they don't know. It's understandable. Um... Well, it's not really a mint error, it's a vice job. So we took a look at two theories. Now the first theory says it's a mint error. For this coin to be a mint error, right, um, first the coin would have to be struck, and then the, the cent would have to be struck again by what appears to be a dime die, because you get an oak leaf on the chin, uh, and you know, these are the words that go on the back of the dime over here. Okay, next, um, we have the E above the God, which is in Q's. So for this to happen at the Mint, it wouldn't have been struck by a hub. It would have to have been struck, or it wouldn't, couldn't be a, a die. It would have to be uh, struck by a hub, which is another weird thing that doesn't usually happen. Uh, in the press itself, the hub, the die was taken away and the hub was used. Okay, has this ever happened? No. Well, anyway, somehow, with all the pressure exerb, exerb, exerted by the press, which had to have a hub instead of a die, it only left a partial imprint. This is what would have to occur for this to be a mint error. And it goes on for several other, uh, you know, issues. Like the collar, for example, would have to be in the way, and, uh, you know, and somehow that left a mark. Or, you look at the vice job theory, there's a penny and a dime, and they were squeezed together. Well, that kind of answers every every possible issue here. And this is called Occam's razor, right? The simplest explanation is usually the right one. Uh, yeah, just if you're coming up with 200 things that have to occur in a specific order in order for this coin to be a mint error, let's give it up. Let's give it up after two or three issues. Okay, I'm going to go back to chat over here real quick. There's home. There, I can see you again. Like I said, I get to talking, and I just miss everything. It's just a song I'm singing in the rain. When in doubt, keep it. You're darn right. Thank you, Beth. This kid needs all the help he can get. There's Hidden. Koi Lovers has joined us. 
Just sent PayPal for tomorrow's show. God love you, Z squared. Uh, it all comes in handy. Uh, we've had people send a dollar. We've had people send them, you know, $150. Uh, people send in, look what, look what uh, Lemonhead sent. Oh, God, look at it. It's Lemonhead Penny. I got a, I had a sticker here. Where the hell did that go? Well, it's gone. I'll get another one. Yeah, there's two ways you can uh, help that big show. One is send cash, and the other is to send coins. So people send coins, and we add them in. This is what Lemonhead sent. There's all kinds of stuff back here. Hidden says, Professor Peavy, I did get your email. I respond when I have time. Okay? Okay! Yep, that'll work just fine. Stuff's not going anywhere. Check. Lots of nice ones, but can tell they have been picked through for grading, it seems, but not varieties. Hmm. You're probably talking about a bag of wheats, I bet you. Had an IT client today. Just got in 20 minutes ago. Oh, it's coin time. Yeah, we've been talking about coins and different things you can do. These ethics, these ethics, uh, apply them apply them to the, the coin hobby first. Right? And get good at the coin hobby. Uh, become excellent at the coin hobby. And you're going to find that those ethics we talked about, you're going to start to apply them in other aspects of your life. That's how it works. Focus on the coins and be excellent there. And you can't help but be excellent in other areas of your life. It really does work that way. Mise en is here. Yes, I think that is a great observation and it would be appropriate. Let's see if I can scroll up and find out what that was. Oh, it was five and 20 minutes ago. Hey, all just joined. What about time? This is Mise en Place. Would it be wise to assume that a postulate would fit right in the whole axiom discussion? Well, an axiom or a postulate, yes, that would be perfect. Uh, call it whatever you like. Uh, an edification, whatever word, it's all good. Uh, but the postulates and the edifications and the uh, uh, the axioms are, are just you know things that are self-evident, um, things you observe. The uh, ethics, those are those are ways of behaving that can benefit you greatly. Uh, Either way it works. Put them both together and you can really take this hobby to a different level. You can make it, you know, go pro. Uh, professionalize everything you do, not just the hobby. There's a lot more out there. But to get there, you got to stop cursing so much. i got a note here. I keep it here at my desk because I'm trying to get better at, you know, broadcasting here. So I keep this note right in front of me. And, well, sometimes I don't see it. I'm working on it though. Uh, I'm an American. I'm constantly in a process of becoming. Mise en place says in a previous video, I believe you mentioned a book that contains previous values by decade. Can you tell me what the title was? Yeah, uh, he had some examples. It was Q. David Bauer's book, The, Expert, the Expert's Guide to Investing and in Collecting Rare Coins. Beth has a copy of it. I've got one back in there in my reading room. Seeking in the rain. Values of coins by series, that is. You mean entire tables. Uh, you can get an old, uh, you can go to some of these used book sites, Thrift Books, A Books, uh, Amazon, and you can get previous copies of the Red Book. And, well, although they weren't particularly accurate any given time of the year, they're pretty good for, you know, what was going on 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, you can look up old values. Uh, Red Book, they got them out there. You can find old gray sheets and look up prices, you know, from 20 years back, 50 years back. The Black Book had price lists. Uh, and you can get those, you know, back into the 70s. Black Steel Reserve says, hey, what's up, Ken? You're one of the best. I just got the 20. You just got the 2019 Red Book today. Outstanding. That'll give you years of good service. At least you can still wear the chaps. I'm wearing them now. Between the chaps and a smile, I'm fully clothed. There we go. Okay, guys, I've been talking for a while. I gotta finish this bread. I gotta 
get some things done. Let's see, what am I looking at? There, look at this bread. This is, I pulled this out of the oven 10 minutes before I went live. I hacked off a piece, you know, because she said it was good. I want to get some more of that into me because I'm starving. How accurate is the gray sheet? Again, it's a price list. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, are they checking all dealers everywhere? What's their ac what, what does their algorithm include? Uh, does it just have P&G dealers, you know, Professional Numismatic Guild? Or does it have listings from, uh, from all over? Uh, I don't know how their algorithm is calculated, so I can't tell you exactly how accurate it is. But you've got to take any price list with a grain of salt. Because the guy in front of you, geez, I like Buffalo Nickels. I'd like the wholesale Buffalo Nickels, but I got 13,000 Buffalo Nickels in the back room. So yours, I can't use them. They have no value to me now. I picked up a book of Coins of England in the UK for 50 cents, Coin Finder. Outstanding. Yeah, you can get used coin books. You know, read them up, check into them, uh, keep them on the shelf for a while. And if you're not going back to that book on the shelf, pass it on to somebody else. Jeez, books are just as valuable as the coins. Trade and sell those. You know, I give away the darn books. Put some salt and buy. That's right. Shelly, I'm glad someone appreciated that. Shelly says, LOL at Beth. Beth is cracking jokes again. Watch yourselves. Mantic says, because they're not considering the true grade of the coin. I love it when you get a dealer giving pre prices from the gray sheet. Yeah. This is what I can offer you. 70% of retail. Now, is gray sheet based on the retail price or based on what dealers are paying? Because that's not necessarily the same darn numbers. Um, me, I pay. I like to pay fifty percent. I like to pay thirty percent for coins. Uh, this one was. This one was just. I, I couldn't pass up on this one. Yeah, I couldn't pass up on the price on this one, even with a thing on it. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. I couldn't pass up the price on this thing because that was a. A low, fraction of retail price. Um, yeah, I like to buy it at 10%, but I don't always get that. 60, do I buy 60%? Sometimes 70. Hey, we're starting to get into, uh, you know, Ken's upper limit. Can I make it go quickly? Sure. Well, okay, maybe I can probably use it. Creation is dealer wholesale. Yep, and they're going to buy it from you for that price and say, this is this is the gray sheet. Yeah. Again, you have to go back to the uh, to the ethics about justice. Are they treating you right when they're doing that? Are they doing you right when they do that? Roy says, I have a 64 blue book. Is that like the gray sheets you spoke of? Uh, blue book would be uh, like a wholesale price to the public. Right? You got, um, you got the price the, the dealer would pay uh, somebody coming in from the public. You'd have a price that the dealer would buy, pay from another dealer. Uh, then you have the price a collector would pay from a dealer. Blue Book and Gray Shit should be similar. They should be quite similar. Red Book is supposedly market. Uh, I think the Red Book is somewhat inflated a lot of times. you got to realize the Red Book, they don't update it but once a year. And the prices can fluctuate through the year. This month, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, uh, MS-70 eagles over here where did we go let me see if i can find a place yeah uh, you see an article in, in the newspaper or you see a uh, uh, a clip on the tv news right about 2016 ms70 silver eagles and interest is going to spike right now on that thing they'll be paying top dollar and then some to get those things because the hype increases value there's no question about that uh, when there's increased demand, prices climb, and they can climb quickly, and they can also fall precipitously, precipitously just as fast. Lincoln says, I hope to see all of you in Mantic show in an hour. I better get ready. I gotta wash my hair, I gotta do my nails, I gotta put on some pants. Graysheet is Coin Dealer Newsletter. Yeah, you can go to Graysheet. What is it? Graysheet.com? You can look that one up. 
Uh, it's about $250 a year. You'll get uh, a, a weekly update, a quarterly, I think it's quarterly or monthly, where they have complete prices for everything. Mm -hmm. Dealer wholesale value of coins. Comes out every week. There you go. I use it for mintages and series. Beth Coddington. Down below, you're going to see a... Uh, a link and I'm gonna go over the screen real quick I'm, I'm gonna load a page okay and this is gonna slow things down so bear with me you're gonna find a link below to the coin inventory and checklist I'm gonna click this so here comes a load up and let me check back here cuz uh, I might just drag yeah I went to yellow real quick but I'm not uh, I'm not dropping any frames yet but we might get some lag, so bear with me. But if you click on the coin inventory and checklist, it's going to take you to this thing, which you can probably only see part of it. Now, I started this, but uh, Ant took it, and he took, he picked up that ball and ran with it. He added he added tons of he, he He tripled or quadrupled the size of this thing. It's a simple spread sheet. If I can get it to load here. Yeah, you got several different pages on the bottom. Let me see if I can adjust this. I might have to shrink this down. And see how much we can see. There we go. This is what you're looking at. Perfect. Okay, you got a spreadsheet. It's a list. Here I've got the Buffalo Nickels. 1913. You got 30 million minted. 75,000 uh, survivors. Uh, Ant put this all in. Ant 242 or 2442. Lincoln cents, same darn thing, right? Here's your dates and the map proofs or VDBs or business strikes or, or what have you. There's saddens, large dates, small dates. It tells you how many were made, right? When it was made, what's special about it. You can print this off yourself. Put a little checkbox over here, right? You can list a grade, what you paid for it, what it's worth. Keep your own notes. Huh? Huh? You got the framework for keeping your own notes. Now down at the bottom you've got Lincoln Sense two cents. Oh, where'd it go? I don't want to come back. Jefferson three cents. Buffaloes, Barbers, Mercury Dimes, Roosevelt Dimes. Let's see. What have we got? Quarters, half dollars, dollars, proof sets, Philippines, and you again you got the same darn thing. Mintage. Surviving population. One neat thing that's in here is the uh, the population rank. Where you have uh, most of these series in order according to how many were made. Uh, you're going to see the same thing at the tops all the all the time. It's going to be the early proofs, the satin issues, and maybe another you know couple of unique ones that are in there. Here's your satins. There's a 1909 SVDB. You've heard of that one. There are 25 other Lincoln cents that are even far more uh, scarce than those kind of a neat one look here's people jumping in if you're in here you got a little chat feature you can use and talk to each other it's a useful tool and uh, me and Ant Ant done a lot of work here uh, the the figures are, are pretty darn accurate it might be a typo but uh, the numbers are right I've checked and checked and you know rechecked uh, the figures should be right but I can't guarantee the typing is right because I'm just a man. Okay, let's go back to the chat. We're going to wind up here. Let me see if I can see the chat. There it is. That's a useful tool for you. We put that together. Hello, graduate student Shay. He's going to move his tassel over to the left side. I'm on it. God love you. Mark Rossman says, I got to go take care of everyone and later. Thanks for coming in. We'll do it again next week. If you want to get your donation in early for tomorrow's big show, donate to PayPal Goods and Services only. And you can send it to this uh, email address right here. Thank you, Lincoln Central. I got my three leg buffalo not too long ago. Nice. There's some great stuff out there. Hidden's moving up in the world. Crystal says yes, LCC. 
That's the Lincoln Center Coins. Now I see what you mean by gray sheet. There you go. Great show, says Roy Johnson. Knowledge is power. Cressa scientia est. That's right. Knowledge itself is power. So that's what we hand out. Uh, here we give you the uh, we give you the information, which gives you more experience when you get more active, and then you get more confidence. And once you have that confidence, you can do anything. That's how it works. I don't make this stuff up. Okay, folks. This bread is calling me. I'm going to take off. Uh, in one hour, you're going to see Manta Coins. There he is, right there. If you uh, click on his channel, let me find that. Right over here, you're going to see Manta Coins. You can go over to the right on his name. And click those three little dots. Where is it? There, those three little dots. And it'll tell you, go to channel. Right? And from there, you can uh, you can subscribe. You can hit his little bell. And when he, when he goes live... Uh, you'll get uh, you'll get a notification. Now you just click on that. You go over to a show, and you watch and talk and chat. And we get in there and just chat all night long. Sometimes it's a good it's a good time. Now he goes through uh, he goes through a lot of half dollar rolls, but he doesn't just pick out the silver. He looks for dye varieties, and he finds more dye varieties than he does silver a lot of nights. And that's where the money is. I keep saying it. Coin Finder says, thanks, Ken. I appreciate you. We thank you for coming by. More people make the chat good. How many people are here? I see 29 watching is what it says. Make sure you smash that uh, that like button so more people get to see this video. C says, thank you for all your knowledge once again. And hone your baking. I can't bake a loaf of bread. It's pretty. It's not very tall. It smells wonderful. Tastes great. I put some whole wheat in there. What's up? I'm too old for this. You're not old enough. Okay. Guys, thank you for coming in. I'm going to take off tomorrow. What time? No. 9.30 tomorrow night. Yeah, I moved it to uh, the evening on the big show. Uh, I needed more time in the daytime. I watch on TV and laptop at the same time. I try to watch the screen. This is what I see. Right, except that I see the screen when it's like the screen. And I gotta move this to see what else I see. But here's the chat. Right. And I got uh, a couple of tabs open as you can see. We got the uh oh the blog. There you go. So I gotta get through that. We got the stuff I show Beth. Here we go. Then I got uh over here we got a bunch of spreadsheets. There's the uh there's the ethics. And I'll turn this into I'll make this an article and put it up on my blog and expound a little further on that. I think I, I think I might have got a little long winded on some of those. That's the stuff on here. And uh, oh, let's see what else is in here. Where'd that go? That's gone. Okay, there's a project I was working on that I could have I gotta put together better and then contact CJ and see if we can make it. Because we need a prototype. Yeah, there's something always going on over here. 4.30 p.m. Central Time, which is right now, but I'm Eastern Time. So that's in, that's in an hour. Logan says, I'm going to go live after you. You get ready, baby, because I'm going to take off right now. You people stay groovy. I'm going to check your vid, coin finder. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to eat this bread first. Okay, let's do it.